to do this to where you're not changing your, your the knock position, I go one, I'm gonna pull this bottom knot down essentially. So I'm gonna put my knock on the string. Um, and then, so this is why I don't cinch this loop crazy tight when I'm doing this. I just, you know, I cinch it so that it's not gonna slide on me, but like I can still move it. So what I do is I, I move that down, I put my knock in there, and then I take my serving. Um, there's a couple different methods with knock sets. So there's always upward pressure on that loop because it's above, the loop is, is above your front hand. So there's always a little bit of upward pressure. So the, the top knot is never, you never have to worry about that putting downward pressure on your arrow, but you do have to worry about the bottom knot putting upward pressure. And the reason for that is again, with that upward pressure, if I drop that bottom knot a little bit further, it pulls my release hook directly behind the arrow. If I don't have any knots, if you walk, look at somebody shoot with no knots when they're at full draw, you can see like the loop is, is like angling up. That release is pulling up and it's above the arrow. I want that release directly behind the arrow. So this is super, super simple. Um, we're just gonna do, I just do like double wrapped overhand knots. Now this first one is important because I don't wanna be directly up against the knock. I want basically, so that the knock is up against that top knot, but I'm gonna leave about, it's probably 32nd of an inch. It's like one serving wrap size between the knock and these knock sets. And the, the reason for that, I'll do that top and bottom. So there's just gonna be a little bit of slop in there when the bow's at, bright, or at rest like this. But then when I, draw the, when I draw the bow and that string pinches, then it will be snug. Like it'll be, there won't be any slop. If I make them perfectly tight up against this knock here, then when I draw the bow, it's actually gonna pinch that knock and that can cause, you know, flight issues. So there's one. So I do four and two, some people will do five and three. Um, again, I don't think one shoots any better or worse than the other. It's just what I've always done. And this is just like BCY, the 3D serving. I think it's 18 thousandths, um, seems to work good. And on this last one, just finish it. Take your lighter. And make sure that melts and then shove it into the, the wraps there. Just like that. So that's four on the bottom. Now we're gonna slide that top knot up. Click my knock back on there, give it its tiny little bit of space. Now you can mark, you could mark your knock as well. Like take a Sharpie and mark on either side. Um, so like that. So see how there's just that tiny little bit of wiggle room there? That's what we want. Just that little bit. Okay, so since that last one was really, really close, um, I did back up, so I'm standing about five yards here. Why have it moved that far? There we go. Oh, I had the spine oriented wrong. My level is pretty good here. I'm a touch low, so I'm probably gonna drop that rest a couple clicks, but I'm significantly right. So what we're gonna do is actually shim that cam over to the right and drop that rest like two or three clicks and then shoot that again. So when you're shimming the cams here, um, they come standard with the silver shims. Hoyt makes silver, red, and black. Um, right now, both of these, well, one cam is shimmed. The bottom cam is shimmed to the right, I mean, pushing the cam to the right. The top one is the opposite. So we're gonna push this top cam in the direction of the, the tail of the arrow. So it's, it's ripping tail right. We're gonna push that cam to the right. So for this, you just need a couple sets of torques. And then when you press this bow, obviously you want slack there. Just make sure that these arms are even so that it's, it's pressing both those limbs evenly and it's not turning it because then it's gonna be really, really hard to get your axles out. Um, of course that one doesn't have it. 
I think Hoyt says, so they went with these bolt-in axles this year versus last year, which were clip-ins, like C-clips. Um, much more secure, stable system. Um, they say 15 pounds of, you know, torque pressure. I forget the, <laughs> the metric there, but it's basically going to pull one of these out. I just use an Allen, one of these heads. Go. I just got to give them a little tap. Tap a roo. There it goes. Oh, that one's in there. So that is harder than it should be. So I'm gonna double check my uh, seam even. There we go. All right, so that was stiffer than usual. <laughs> um, I might put a little bit of axle lube on that. Um, so now we got that out. Uh, Point makes this little tool, which is really handy for this. So there. So now I'm literally just gonna flip flop these. So we need to push it to the right so the larger one is gonna go on the left. So there's my axle. Like so. stuff in my hands that and then this can be kind of tricky but basically you just got to squeeze this in there with this tool and then got to make sure we're lined up in there This is, there it goes. Just like so. So that's a perfect example of like, my limbs weren't lined up perfectly. So I had to, <laughs> that's why it was so stiff getting out of there. But, um, So basically, I don't, I'm not measuring this, but you just, you want to cinch it, but you don't want to like crank on it down. Um, all right, so now we got the top cam matching the bottom cam. It doesn't matter if they're mismatched. Like if you, let's say they're both pushed to the right and you're shooting tail left and you push one to the left and it's a bullet hole, that's fine. It does, they don't have to be in the same position. Um, in this scenario, it seems like that's probably where they're going to end up. Um, so we'll shoot this and if it's still tail right, then I would go on one top or bottom, doesn't matter. I'd go to the next size shim. So the thicker, the thick shim would be thicker than the one, one that's in here and the thin one would be thinner. And I'd, then I'd shoot it again. If I was still tail right, I'd do the same to the top and just so on and so forth. So you don't need to do both cams every time unless it's like really severe, which then there's probably something else going on. Um, that and then we were just Barely, barely low. Kamsky has a new rest called the Everest that just came out, and I think I'm going to run it because I hate having to get to these adjustments here with this cage on the inside like this. I should probably loosen this up. So 
basically I'm just gonna loosen this up. I'm gonna give it like three clicks down is all. Now we'll go four. Barely anything. Tighten these back up. So you might be wondering why my sight's not on here. Your sight will have nothing to do with tuning the bow. Um, like I said, I have not decided what sight I'm gonna shoot on this yet. Um, I don't have any of the UV sliders that I want in stock that are on order. Um, and I'm not, I need to play around with it. It's kind of weird left-handed because they don't have left-handed sight. You basically just flip the UV slider upside down. And I've never shot with pins coming in from the right. I've always shot with them coming in from the left and I'm wondering if that's gonna mess with me. Um, but either way, I am going to run their Picatinny mount. So the next time you see me shooting this bow, I will have chosen a sight. But for today, we're just going over the, the, the guts of the bow, the tuning of the bow. So, all right, now we're ready to shoot again. And I can tell that this arrow is probably a little weak for this bow even at 75, um, 300, you're kind of right on the bubble there. And especially with broadheads, I would always rather err on the stiff side than the weak side, um, just because especially with a fixed blade, the longer that arrow takes to recover coming out of the bow, the more time that head's gonna have time to, to catch wind and want to play in one direction or the other. So, all right. Be the bullet, baby. Close, super, super close. So we're just a fuzz low still. It's kind of hard to tell with four fletch sometimes it blows out mm -hmm. that hole, but that is definitely low. So let's shoot one more. It's funny, this is actually, I don't usually have this many shots to tune a bow, but here we are. So it moved it quite a bit. That's a little low and actually a little bit left. So again, I'm gonna drop that rest a few more clicks. If I drop that rest, I don't know, I just kind of gave it a spin. So probably 10 clicks, we'll see what this does. Better. So we're back to level, but that one went right. So I am actually like, I'm definitely gonna take this grip off because I, I'm so used to shooting that Matthews just with the side plates, it's so defined. And this one I can definitely feel, it's just, it's just not that like solid defined edge that I like. So we'll shoot that again. The height's perfect, but it was straight right. So pretty much the exact same holes, those, those two right there. Now, I don't know, I'm gonna experiment with it. That might be, if I go to a top hat or if I switch the shims, that might take me too far back the other way, but I, I hate moving my rest inside of center. So for being left-handed, I would have to move my rest inside and then you run into issues with your sight coming over and getting blocked off by the riser. So I am, I am going to um, try the next size shims and see if that brings it over. I hope it doesn't make it too far. We're perfectly level there, but we're like a shaft outside. Um, part of me says leave it there because these are brand new strings and I, I'm gonna do this again in like, you know, I'm gonna check it again in a couple hundred shots. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna do it um, and just see if it brings it in. That one was nice. So 
That, I mean, if I was, if I'm nitpicking it, it's a touch, like a half of a shaft left maybe. Um, so that I would just do with the rest. I would just bump that rest out, I don't know, three, four clicks. Um, for where I'm at right now without having a sight on it, like I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna shoot that a bunch, give those strings a chance to settle in. I know every string says they have no break-in period, no stretch, blah, blah, blah. They all move a little, little bit. So um, I think that, like I said, I mean, it is not a perfect bullet hole. I'm not telling you it is. But for where I'm at right now, I think I'm gonna leave that, um, shoot that bow a bunch, and then essentially go over that, you know, that same process of tuning. I don't think I'm gonna have to move the shims again, um, but I may need to move that rest a little bit one way or the other. Um, another thing, and I can tell because based on where I'm standing here, I'm getting a little bit of a different tear. Um, I think these arrows are underspined. So I took a turn and a half out of that. It was right at like 81. Um, and I think these are just, they're right on the bubble of being underspined. So depending on how close or far I am from the target, that arrow is, is flexing a different direction, which tells me it's taking too long to recover for my liking out of the bow. So I'm going to, I'm going to just get my 250s and start shooting them. Um, the process will not change in terms of what I did and with shimming the bow and all that. Um, honestly, I, I was thinking that this was going to be a much shorter video in terms of like the ease of getting that tuned, but I'm kind of glad I had some hiccups there so that you could see what I do um, in order to correct those. Um, but I like the way the bow feels. The draw length feels great. Obviously, I'm going to change that grip. Um, once I figure out what sight I'm going to get on there, I'll put that on there. I will get the, the peep height set tied in. Um, so I'll probably break this video up into a couple, couple videos. So um, this is the initial like out of the box setup. And then we'll go over some more fine tuning stuff in, in a video here in a couple weeks. Um, but I appreciate you guys tuning in today. I know this is a little bit longer than we usually do. Um, but I've been asking, been getting asked for a lot of tuning and bow build videos. So I think I'm going to start doing like a similar video, probably not take you through the whole setup of the bow, um, but tuning the different bows in the shop that we have here. Um, if you are not familiar, I am here at G4 Archery in uh, North Plains, Oregon. Um, I cannot ship bows, but I can ship any other products you see in these reviews. So um, if you're looking for something and you support the channel, I greatly, I really, really appreciate that. Um, and as usual, remember precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle. I'll see you at the range.